I am pleased to welcome you all, and please allow me at the outset to pay tribute to the IEMT who facilitated the work for which we gather here today in a very competent manner. Their ability to identify the crucial contents of this communication strategy too will be remembered as the hallmark of their programming pro prowess throughout the alignment of process work. Ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that the alignment process is not the task of government alone, but of all the stakeholders, including developmental partners and non-state actors, such as the civic society, the academia, and most importantly, the general public. The launch of the website today uh, is more than a mere embracement uh, of ICT, uh, as we recognize that information is knowledge, and knowledge is power. The website will therefore empower uh, all people who desire to know what is going on with regard to the alignment process with knowledge and news. It will also update uh, people with events that will be taking place uh, all over the country with regard to the uh, alignment uh, of legislation. The launch of the website bears testimony to the quest of the Ministry of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs to ensure that justice is delivered to all through information dissemination. The Interministerial Tax Force uh, is led by a secretariat uh, consisting of uh, uh, basically three bodies, if I may call them that. Uh, that is my own office, the Attorney General's office, uh, then the Law Development Commission, uh, and then the uh, uh, Constitutional and Parliamentary Affairs Department of the Ministry of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. Now, the functions of the Interministerial Task Force uh, can basically be summarized uh, as being four. Uh, the first one being to ensure uh, a concerted effort towards the alignment uh, of legislation to the Constitution. Uh, the second one being to uh, receive and advise on progress reports received from the line ministries on alignment. The third one to identify new policy areas that should be operationalized by means of new statute laws. Uh, and the fourth one to facilitate public or stakeholder engagement in the process of constitutional uh, implementation and alignment. In essence, the IMT is there to facilitate the work uh, of all line ministries whose role it is to initiate legislative reforms on the laws that they administer for purposes of alignment with the Constitution. This work uh, of the IMT uh, uh, is greatly assisted by a technical partner uh, in the form of the Center for Applied uh, Legal Research, uh, which is headed by Mr. Chishakwe, uh, who is uh, sitting up here. Um, and, uh, the funding for the process uh, uh, has been provided uh, very kindly uh, by the European Union. Um, there is another committee uh, to assist with policy direction uh, on the uh, work of the IMT, where uh, the IMT sits with the Center for Applied Legal Research and also uh, the, 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 the European Union partners. Now, in order to monitor and evaluate progress being made, uh, the IMT has developed uh, a monitoring and evaluation tool known as the Control List Bill Tracker. Uh, once you go onto the website, you'll be able to see this bill tracker. Uh, the bill tracker provides a summary of the status of each bill for purposes of monitoring and evaluating progress made in the legislative alignment pro process. Through the control list bill tracker, the IMT has been able to monitor the overall progress which has been made during the alignment of laws process and to conduct an overall analysis and make recommendations accordingly. It should further be noted that the control list bill tracker is constantly updated on the basis of information submitted to the IMT Technical Committee by line ministries during regular 
uh, IMT uh, meetings. We should not be deaf to the concerns expressed by various stakeholders and sometimes reflected in the media regarding the alignment process. As we see it, these concerns can be linked to three main issues. The first one is the perceived inordinate length of time the process is taking, in particular for legislation relating to the protection of fundamental human rights and freedoms, including the, these days, I'm afraid, uh, much talked about electoral act, but also various public order and security related acts as well as media laws. The second issue which uh, arises is sometimes what is perceived as the disappointing content of some of these law bills and laws produced without the benefit of proper consultation and assistance for prior quality screening by legal experts made available. Thirdly, there are also questions regarding what sometimes appears as a fragmented approach to the alignment process, where different acts and bills covering or touching upon the same thematic areas should be tackled together in order to ensure internal consistency and coherence, as for example, as the case I'm thinking now of the local government uh, thematic area, where you have, of course, the local authority act, you have the rural districts act, you have the, the environmental act, you have the traditional leaders act, you have a couple of acts which influence each other, interact with each other, and which should be tackled uh, in a coherent way. The European Union and the other funding partners, Switzerland and Norway, share some of these concerns. Indeed, the project committee, which consists of the funding partners, the Minister of Justice and the Centre for Applied Legal Research, has had lengthy discussions <coughs> on how to speed up the alignment process whilst reinforcing the quality and the internal consistency of the bills being prepared. The project committee has come up with several strategies to improve the legislative alignment process. One of these strategies consists of convening a high-level IMT meeting of all permanent secretaries in order to obtain increased ownership from the senior decision makers and to find solutions to the challenges affecting alignment of the, of the respective laws. It is my distinct honor and privilege to officiate at this occasion to launch the newly designed website of the Interministerial Task Force, IMT, on the implementation of Constitution of Zimbabwe Amendment Number 20, Act 2013, which marks yet another milestone in government's endeavor to promote public awareness and participation through e-governance. Section 2, subsection 1 of the Constitution provides that this Constitution is the supreme law of Zimbabwe and any law, practice, custom, or conduct inconsistent with it is invalid to the extent of the inconsistency. The website provides for the sharing of important information pertaining to the legislative alignment process with individuals, interested publics, and the rest of the nation as a key enabler to the successful implementation of the alignment of our laws process. The launch of the Interministerial Task Force website is more than just a mere embracement of ICT as it embodies my ministry's quest to ensure that the multifaceted range of stakeholders in the alignment process has access to information 
on the legislative alignment process. It further seeks to uphold our deep-seated constitutional and democratic principles of consultation and validation by citizens before implementation of <coughs> statutes that affect them. I'm therefore delighted with the potential of this achievement in assisting my ministry through the IMT to communicate better and serve the public more effectively. It is my hope that the website will be put to good use by our people. I also wish to thank all stakeholders for affording time to attend this important launching ceremony and urge them to continue to join hands with government to ensure a successful alignment process of our laws to the new constitution. With these few remarks, it is my singular honor and pleasure to declare the Inter-Ministerial Task Force website officially launched. of the IMT, as eloquently explained by our speakers this morning, attests to the attempts by the state to make justice reside first in the hearts and souls of the citizens in order for it to express itself in the life and conduct of the state. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we have heard that the IMT is playing a crucial role in ensuring that the laws that govern us as citizens today in our day-to-day -day lives truly reflect the letter and spirit of the Constitution. This is being done through a comprehensive process we have learned, but places citizens and stakeholder consultations at the center. The launch of the IMT website this morning further buttresses this approach. Through the website, citizens are now able to monitor and participate in the crafting of legislation that affects them. This demonstrates the desire to have justice first reside in the hearts and souls of the citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the IMT Technical Committee, I would like to deeply thank our speakers. We were all inspired by your great words. I would like to express our deep and sincere appreciation and gratitude to our guest of honor, the Honorable Vice President, and the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, who is today also the Acting President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Honorable Edim Nangagwa, for taking time off his busy schedule to give us the keynote address on this auspicious occasion, and for also officially launching the IMT website. Last but not least, I'd like to thank our funding partners, without whose support the work of the IMT would have been extremely difficult to undertake. In this regard, I would like to specifically thank the delegation of the European Union, the Embassy of Switzerland in Zimbabwe, and the Embassy of Norway in Zimbabwe for their support to the work of the IMT. I thank you.